Hey everybody, this is for watercolor one class and I'm going to show you a couple different um, techniques um, as well as just different ways that we can kind of use watercolor. So we, we did our color blending, you did your complementary colors, you did your color wheel, so we're moving on. So I'm kind of thinking you should be at this point around Thursday, Friday, roughly. It's hard for me to kind of gauge where you'll be, but um, I'm going to show you <clears throat> a couple different things you can do with watercolor that's different from using, say, acrylic paint. Uh, so again, I have my clean glass of water. I have my tray of paints. And you can see what, I, what I've done is I just sketched this little three-dimensional cube. So all I did was I made a long little rectangle and made it look kind of three-dimensional. Making kind of think of it like a, just making a shallow box or a tall box. It really doesn't matter. All we're doing is that we're gonna um, shade this essentially, use value to make it look more three dimensional than it already does. And you can see, like, I went a little too tall here, and I got some erase lines. That's okay. I'm really looking to make sure that you guys understand what the what glazing is, and that's what I'm gonna talk about. So um, once you have your box made, I'm gonna have you put one, two. And three and what does one two and three represent are the number of coats that you're gonna put on top of this so I think I'll make mine green you can make yours whatever color you'd like it'll probably be a little bit more successful if you choose colors at least like on from yellow down so green blue violet brown or black I nah, don't use black you could that's a little trickier so I'm gonna get my green mix it up in my my lid, my little palette, and the first one I want to do is I want to get a lot of water. So when you add water to watercolor, it gets thinner. It spreads those pigments apart. And what that what happens is that it makes it lighter. So we're going to add a lot of water. I'll try to get that in, not in this heavy shadow. And you are going to paint the entire one, two, and three, all three of them, with that one very, very light color, whatever the one you choose. If you choose purple, do purple, blue, blue, whatever. But you want to just have enough that you can cover up that entire box or cube or whatever we're going to be calling this. Okay? And so I suppose it would be a good time to actually explain what glazing is. And what glazing for, for this is that we are simply going to kind of build up layers, one on top of the other, and because watercolor is transparent, as we build up layers, it's going to get darker and darker. So this needs to dry. So it has one, two, and three. I went over all of them. Um, we're going to let that dry for a second. Okay. So I'm going to move. And I'm sorry, my camera work is not not the best. I'm no YouTube star by any means, nor will I ever be, but this is my best attempt to make sure that you guys kind of, we all stay on track for, for this trimester as you are kindly putting up with me, my absence, I should, should say. So I'll move my camera down, and I just put that right next to my complementary colors. You can put yours wherever you want in your portfolio. It's up to you. All right, moving down. I took a ruler, and I just divided out a square. So this is um, five inches by about five inches. My camera is a little crooked, but this also is going to be worth is going to be glazing. So I'm going to make mix up a little bit more color. This time I think just for changing things up, I'm going to make this kind of like a I'll make it blue. So I'll take my little a new little cubby area. I'll grab my blue paint. Try to show you this. Take some blue paint. Push it in there. Get some water and this time we want to make up quite a bit because we're going to cover up this entire square with this paint so we want to, we want to make sure we have enough to cover everything up so taking a little bit more a little bit more making sure we add more water but we do want it to be light we don't want it to be too thick so adding more waters is a good thing so i think that i think that'll get through me through it um, so I'm going to take my brush, and you guys have different types of brush, so if you have one of those those wider brushes, those ones with the rounded heads, those big fluffers as I call them, that would be a good time to use them. Somebody, Mr. Check, didn't think ahead and plan and brought enough brushes home with him, so he's stuck using this little point. 
Um, but that's okay. I can still still use it. It'll still work. And all you're trying to do is that you're trying to cover up this large area. So if you have one of those big fluffy ones, and this is going to go really fast for you, that is what you'd call a wash. Because you're washing all the color across the paper, and it's a good way to establish, um, say, a background for a sky, or um, if you need to cover a lot of space quickly. And if you if you run out of lines like I did, no big deal. I would like you guys to actually take your time on these and do a little bit better job. I'm trying to get through so you're not stuck watching me paint the entire hour, and you can actually get some work done. And you can see how like some of my values are are um, are not going to be the same simply because I don't have the right kind of brush, but I, we'll we'll still make it work. Okay. So again, this is still working with glazing. Okay. So once you have that, I'm just going to let that dry because you can kind of see how it's still kind of shiny and glistening. We need that to dry a little bit more. So again, I'm going to move my camera back. And I know it's not the best as far as being a professional filmer or, you know, someone who films things, but it's my best I can do. So then I'm going to take um, that same green pool that I had because I, I still want it to be thin. Glazing still keeping it thin. So here's my little pool, if you can see that on camera. And now I, these numbers represent the number of times you're going to go over it. So I went over this big, large area one time. I need to go over the second area. This will be my second time. And that number three it needs to have three coats, which means I can go over that number three area this time also. So just covering it up. You can see how light number one appears now next to number two. We're just trying to smooth some of those values out. And play around with your brushes. If you have like, um, say, a flathead brush, those are really nice for keeping nice tight edges. Um, these points are nice for doing detailed work and, and a lot of other things, but um, sometimes they're not the best for everything. So now we have one coat on top with two coats over here and two coats over here. Once again, I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back and do one final coat on that three and it'll end up looking, because we're using value, a little bit more three-dimensional. We're using value through glazing. That's the technique that we're using. So this, this one little tiny box, I will be grading this also, just to make sure you kind of understand the process. So draw the box, do the glazing, with the, and then it'll make the different values. So as I've been talking and just doing that one little glazing step, my blue is dry enough to the point. So let's, again, sorry about this, but let's move the camera back. And <clears throat> I'm going to clean my brush off, dry it off, get some water. And this is this is where I'm at now. So here's the same puddle of blue for my glazing. Now, this is going to look a little bit um, different. So we're I'm going to leave this top edge alone. And I'm just going to kind of make, make, I don't know, call it. I just call them wavy lines, up and down, get a little bit more blue in there because it's kind of getting watery. And I'm going to come down. I'm going to leave all of this alone. Don't touch anything up there. That top part now is done. And you're just going to bring all that paint straight down. And again, using a bigger brush, um, your life is going to be a little bit easier than I'm making mine right now. Okay, so all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. I have to mix a little bit more up. I ran out, so that's okay. Just make sure it's thin enough. All the way down, all the way down. Okay, so let's see if I can get it so it doesn't have a shine on it so you can see. So now I have my, my light coat and my second coat, and it's a little bit darker because we're glazing. We're doing the same process, but not in such a rigid manner as over here. All right, and now I'm hoping in that short amount of time, which who knows, I don't think it really is. It's still a little wet, but I'm gonna try it anyway. I wanna put my, my next coat on. Ideally, you'd let this wait, you'd let this dry a little bit, but because I'm kind of limited on time as far as the, long these videos can run, I'm gonna go for it. So I'm gonna, once again, I'm gonna grab my green, grab my green, and I'm going to go over my, now this would be my third layer in this one little spot. 
this third layer will be the darkest now. Okay? So we have one one layer, two layer, three layer. And by just adding those, that that value change, which is not extreme, it's very subtle actually, it makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional. So think about if you're doing, think about if this is a building, okay, and the sun is out. And so you, you, let's say you've seen the top of the building, you can see the front of the building and the side of the building. If you add some windows to this, all of a sudden this little tiny cube becomes something a little bit more impressive instead of just a little practice cube. This in and of itself can give you a lot of tools. Again, I'm always talking about tools in your tool belt to, to do some really incredible things just by that little act of adding those three different values. Okay, So I'm going to wash my brush out. And now I'm going to switch over back to my blue and move my camera once again. There we go. A little bit better view of that little line I just made. So I'm going to go back into my blue. And don't worry, I won't do the whole thing here. I, I have an example pre-made for you. But I'm just going to get a nice thin, thin little wash here. I'm going to do the exact same thing I just, I just got done doing. So now um, I... I'll start here and maybe go up. Let's see, it's a little wet, so it's kind of blooming out a little bit. Up, up, and stop there. And I'm going to bring all of this down. Down, 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 down. Because essentially, we're just glazing over and over and over and over. Okay? This needs to be wet. If it's not wet, it's going to have, what's happening is right here, it's kind of bleeding. That's not really what you're you're looking for. I'll show you an example here once I'm done doing this of what I what I am looking for. This side was dry. You can see how crisp that line is. That's what you're looking for. A little bit more water and finish this off. So you can see we have we have our background. We have like pretend these are like little type of smoky mountains. We have our next little um, ridge of mountains that's a little bit closer to us. And if I had the time, because the video will cut me off, eventually what you get is something like this. Where there we go. So you have your background. You have this nice little line. You have another one, and all you're doing is bring that paint straight down. Do another little mountain ridge. Bring it down. Bring it down. And this is what glazing can do. All of a sudden. You have like this really beautiful, beautiful background where you could still do something more in the foreground, if you, whether it be, um, you know, maybe it's a campsite and you have trees or whatever and you're looking out at, over at these mountains. But that's a very, very simple way that you can get some interesting, interesting background through glazing. That's what this exercise is all about. Um, I'm just running out of time. So um, if you have questions on that, wait to do that until I get back on the following Monday. The last little piece that I want to show you, and I got a little dirty because I'm moving my, my palette around a little bit, is this. It's this, um, this is a cone. So you can kind of see, you can see the top. It's, it's like a rounded triangle, essentially. So you're going to draw a triangle and you're just going to make a rounded base. That's all that is. And then the shadow, you can see I made a little, little boo-boo there. You pretty much just want to kick it straight up from the corner out and back in. That's going to be the cast shadow. We're going to make this shape into um, into into a three D form essentially, and it's very easy. And it's actually very fun and cool. And the way that we're going to do it is that's called wet on wet. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to take my water, and I'm just there's no paint on my brush. I'm just getting um, this this shape wet. And because my water has a little bit of a blue tinge to it, you might be seeing a little blue come up. That's okay. I'm actually going to make this a purple. Cone. Um, so here we go, up, up, up. There we are. So you can kind of see um, from the camera, you can see the light reflecting. That's what you want. You don't want it to be soaking wet, but you don't want it to be too dry either. And this part's fun. This part is fun. So I'm going to take a little bit of purple, and that's, I don't know why, just because. And we're going to pretend that the light source. Is coming this way. So this area, I want to leave that light, but that means this backside I can make fairly dark. So I'm going to take my purple and I'm just going to run my brush right on the edge of that cone. And I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but starting to kind of 
move out. So I'll, I'll stop moving for a while so you can just kind of see what it does. The paint will stay within that water that you put. It's not going to go outside as long as your water's not outside. It should stay right in there. So I'm going to drop a little bit more darker color right on top and it too. And I'm just going to kind of move it. Move it a little bit down this way a little bit. Move it a little bit over here. There we go. Okay. And all very, very, very quickly, we've changed that. We've changed that shape into a, a form. So now the light's hitting over here, the dark edges over here. That's what value can do. Is that making using light and dark um, value, you're gonna have something that changes from a shape to a form. Okay. Now the, the back side to make it look even more realistic, this back side I did not add water on. Um, in fact, I'm actually gonna keep my brush just a hair away from this edge that is painted. And if you if you accidentally bump it, you'll see what happens is that it's gonna bleed right into your shape. So as long as the paper is dry and we don't touch it, it should be fine. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more water. And usually this shadow, the shadow that's cast by the by the form, the object that you're painting, the shadow should usually be just a just a little bit darker. I'm following that line very close um, because I don't want to bump it. Okay. And then I can just finish painting this in, just like you would with any other type of paints. And giving you yourself that cast shadow makes it look like it's sitting on a surface, makes it kind of pop out a little bit more, makes it look a little bit more realistic so it doesn't just look uh, like a shape. It starts to look more like a form. So our light's hitting over here. It's now going to cast a shadow that way. Those are the three things that I want you to practice. I fully anticipate those to take you at least two days just because of the wait time and making sure everything looks right. Um, so this is kind of that Thursday, Friday, hopefully that's where you guys are at. Um, if you have questions, I will come back on Monday, hopefully, and I should be able to answer them. All right, thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys all later.